Welcome back. I hope you've been enjoying lessons since I last saw you. In your last lesson, Mrs. Kingham sent you this task. Have you got it in front of you? That's great. Let's check and see how you got on. When the fraction was a quarter, then there must be four equal parts in the whole. I've drawn mine like this. My squares are in a line, but yours don't need to be as long as there are four equal parts. Here, we are told that there are five equal parts in the whole. We know then that each part is one fifth and the whole can be represented by five equal squares. Here, we can see from the picture that there are six equal parts, though we know that the number of equal parts in the whole is six and each part is one sixth of the whole. In the next example, we are told that there are seven equal parts. And so each part must represent one seventh of the whole, and the whole will have seven squares in its shape. Now, how did you approach the final part? All of the boxes are blank. Well, this was up to you. You could choose any number of equal parts in the whole, and then the denominator in your fraction would show that number of equal parts. So, for example, if you chose 10 equal parts in the whole, then each part would be one tenth of the whole. Or if you chose 15 equal parts in the whole, then each part would represent one fifteenth of the whole. Now on to today's lesson. You'll be using lots of maths that you've already been learning in previous lessons, so think carefully about what you've already been doing. Mr Lathwell and Miss O'Brien cycle to school each morning. This is one half of Miss O'Brien's journey, and this is one third of Mr Lathwell's journey. What do you notice? Yes, that's right. The parts look the same size, but the fractions are different. Does this help to tell us who cycles further to school? Will the whole journey be the same for both of them? What do you think? First, let's think about Miss O'Brien's journey to school. What do we already know from previous lessons that can help us visualise the whole of her journey? Could you remember the stem sentence we used last time? Yeah, that's the one. If one is a part, then the whole is times as much. Take parts and put them together to make the whole. Does that help us to visualise the whole of Miss O'Brien's journey? Let's try using what we already know. This is one half of Miss O'Brien's journey. If one half is a part, then the whole is two times or twice as much. Take two parts and put them together to make the whole. Now we can see the whole of Miss O'Brien's journey. Do you think Mr Lathwell's journey will be longer, shorter or the same? Now let's try to visualise Mr Lathwell's journey to school. What do we already know? Well, we know that this is one third of Mr Lathwell's journey to school. Now let's use our STEM sentences to help us think about the whole of his journey. Say it with me. If one third is a part, then the whole is three times as much. Take three parts and put them together to make the whole. Now we can see the whole of Mr Lathwell's journey. Who does have the longest journey to school? This is one half of Miss O'Brien's journey, but this part is one third of Mr Lathwell's journey. Miss O'Brien's journey has been divided into two equal parts and Mr Lathwell's journey has been divided into three equal parts we can see that the whole of Mr Lathwell's journey is longer. Now it's your turn. Can you tell which line is longer? Try to visualise it. Can you draw it? Use your pencil and ruler to draw what you think the two lines will look like when the box is removed. Remember the stem sentence that we've been using. Pause the video and have a go. Are you back? Did you use the stem sentence to help you? First line. If one half is a part, 
then the whole is two times as much. Take two parts and put them together to make a whole. Second line, if one third is a part, then the whole is three times as much. Take three parts and put them together to make one whole. Did your lines look like this? Great job. Hannah needs to select the longest piece of ribbon to finish her art project. Some of the ribbon is hidden, so can we tell which piece she should choose? What if we knew what fraction of the whole we could see? This is one fifth of the blue ribbon, and this is one quarter of the yellow ribbon. Does that help us to work out which is the longest? Do you think she should select the yellow ribbon or the blue ribbon? Try to imagine the ribbons. Pause the video and draw what you think each will look like. Are you back? Let's have a look and see if you were right. We could see one fifth of the blue ribbon. We know that if one fifth is a part, then the whole is five times as much. Take five parts and put them together to make one whole. We could see one quarter of the yellow ribbon. We know that if one quarter is a part, then the whole is four times as much. Take four parts and put them together to make one whole. Did your ribbons look like this? Well done. Now it's your turn. There are two questions in your practice activity. For number one, can you draw what the lines would look like once the box is removed? And for number two, which of the journeys is the longest and how do you know? You might also want to have a go at this challenge question. Could you design a problem for someone else in your house, like the ones we've looked at today? What is it you will need to remember? What has been the same in each of our examples and what has been different? Here is a bit of a clue for you. Good luck.